In this video, I'm gonna show you how I fitted the cheapest all metal hot end I could find to my 3D printer and what I had to do to make it work. The printer I'm using to show this upgrade is my CR10S Pro. I've had this printer for a couple of years now and the biggest problem I've had is getting replacement parts relating to the hot end. For some reason, Creality decided to design the CR10S Pro with a different nozzle thread to pretty much every other printer out there. The most common nozzle thread is M6 with a one mil thread pitch. The CR10S Pro uses an M6 thread, but with a 0.75 mil thread pitch. What this basically means is that parts aren't interchangeable between machines that use the two different thread pitches and finding parts for my printer is a lot harder. This doesn't just affect nozzles, but also the heat block and the heat break. When I needed to replace my heat block because of a worn thread, I only had one option to get me up and running quickly. However, it soon became apparent that the quality of this part wasn't as good as the original, and I soon had another stripped thread. It was at this point that I decided to throw in the towel and replace whatever I needed to, so I could use spare nozzles, heat blocks, and anything else I had for my other printers. Another complication I had is that the CR10S Pro hot end appears to be longer than other Creality printers like the Ender 3 and CR10. So if I wanted to use the same mounting holes, I was gonna end up with another difficult to replace bespoke part. Whilst looking, I kept seeing how much cheaper the more common parts were. And basically after getting fed up of looking, I just decided to buy the cheapest hot end on Amazon with next day delivery and just figure it out once it arrived. So sure enough, the next day my package arrived and I had to start figuring out what I had to do to make it work. The new hot end is about 15 millimeters shorter than the old one and comes with a heat block and a stainless steel nozzle, which I promptly removed and replaced with a brass one. If I were to just bolt this assembly in, then the problem I would have is that the nozzle wouldn't stick out the bottom of the fan shroud. The cooling fans would all be pointing in the wrong place and my BL Touch probe would be far too low compared to the nozzle. There are some slots a little further down on the X carriage that I could use, but this would put the nozzle a little bit lower than the original hot end. This would mean I would have similar problems to the nozzle being too high, but maybe they'd be a little bit easier to overcome. I decided that the nozzle being lower was preferable, so I threaded some M3 bolts through from the back and locked them in place with nuts to leave posts for the hot end to attach to. So on to the next problem. The BL touch was now too high. The part cooling fan duct won't even fit and the cooling fins on the hot end are no longer in line with the hot end cooling fan. All of these problems needed to be solved to make this hot end usable. Luckily, I have other 3D printers and Fusion 360, so I can design and print my own parts. So how do we go about designing the new parts we need? Well, the first thing to do is to design and model all of the parts on the X carriage that our new parts need to interact with. I won't go into detail about how I did this, but basically it took about an afternoon to get everything modeled. The easiest part to start with was the BL touch mount. All I really needed to do here was to copy the mount that I was using previously, but extend it down by the amount that the new nozzle was sitting lower than the old one. Next, I needed to come up with a shape for a part cooling fan duct. As long as it misses all the parts, the shape doesn't really matter that much, but what is important is where the air goes. You want the duct to point at the area around the nozzle to cool the filament that's just been extruded, rather than at the nozzle where it will cool the filament before it comes out. The lowest part of it needs to also be a few millimetres above the lowest point on the nozzle so that it clears your print. After I was happy with this, I set about designing a hot end cooling fan duct. Now a lot of hot end assemblies don't have a duct directing air directly at the hot end. The main reason I'm adding one is that the fan is no longer directly in line with the hot end. As this is an all metal hot end, it's critical that we keep the throat of the hot end below the filament transition temperature. If we don't do this, filament will start to melt before it reaches the nozzle and we'll get a clog. I've therefore made a duct that directs all air coming from the fan through the cooling fins and avoids blowing any air towards the heat block. If we were to blow any air at the heat block, then all we're gonna do is make it harder for the heat block and therefore the nozzle to get to the correct temperature. With the parts printed, I assembled everything and then checked that everything sat in the right place. I printed everything here in PLA Plus as it has a slightly higher melting point of PLA and it's just as quick and easy to print with. Now, before we can print anything using our new parts, we need to calibrate the hot end by doing a PID tune. Now I'll do a separate video on how to do this in the future and then link it in the description below. But basically it controls how quickly your hot end heats up and makes sure that the temperature doesn't overshoot. With this now done, it's time to try it out. With an all metal hot end, feeding in the Bowden tube is far less critical and it's only really there as a guide for the filament. So how does it print? I'm starting with a completely stock Cura standard quality profile and using PLA to print a calibration cube. Well, it works. In the first four millimeters or so, the layers look a little inconsistent, but after that, it's very neat. 
There is some ghosting which can probably be tuned out, but I don't see any issues which could point to a hot end problem. There's no sign of any under extrusion which might indicate a clog or partial clog, which you would get if your hot end cooling wasn't good enough. Also, part cooling looks plenty good enough, but this calibration cube isn't really much of a test for part cooling. For that, we'll need something a little more difficult. So next, I decided to print a Benchy with some silk PLA, which should show up any issues that need addressing. I used Amazon Basics Silk PLA for this one, and as you can see, it's pretty good. Unsurprisingly, for Silk PLA, the infill pattern is showing through the walls in a few places, but this can easily be cured by using thicker walls. I believe the minor hull imperfections are caused by the Z seam, as I forgot to set the position and let my slicer decide. The only other issue I can find, if I'm being really critical, is some ghosting on the left-hand side of the hull, which is happening after the nozzle has slowed down to turn around the bow. Again, I suspect I could tune this out with slicer settings and see nothing here that points to any hot end problems. After seeing the first few prints with this hot end, I'm going to tentatively call this change a success. With some basic knowledge of how the hot end works, I've been able to fit a hot end designed for a different printer to my CR10S Pro and have it work pretty faultlessly straight away. This hot end change only cost me £20 and in the US it's only $20. I'll obviously put links in the description to the hot end and free download links to all of the files that I use to make this work for if you want to do the same. I can't give any kind of endorsement to the long term performance of this hot end as I haven't been using it very long. Some Amazon reviews have said that this hot end is a little delicate and that it's easy to twist the heat break out of the heat sink if you're not careful, but I haven't had any problems. All I can say is that it costs very little and is so far working really well. The main takeaway from this for me is that you can fit a hot end to a printer it wasn't designed to be used for and make it work. If I do have any problems with the heat break twisting, then the next thing I'll try is a standard Ender 3 hot end, so watch this space. Let me know in the comments if you've ever changed the hot end on your 3D printer and what challenges you've had. Also drop me a comment if you're surprised to see that it is possible to use supposedly incompatible parts between printers. Click here for another video relating to the CR10S Pro or click here for another video you might like. Thanks for watching.